This episode of Cape Ann Today is brought to you by The Building Center, setting the standard for quality and service since 1903. To honor March as Women's History Month, we are speaking with women municipal leaders around Cape Ann. Today, we're talking with Sarah Wilkinson, the longest sitting member of Rockport's Board of Selectmen, and she has been chair a number of times. Hi, Sarah. Hi, nice to see you. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to have you. So probably to some people's surprise, you actually have a job that's not just a black person. Uh, can you tell us about your professional career? Sure. Um, I started out, goodness gracious, I, I, I've had kind of a long and winding career. I started out, um, I went to business school and got my MBA. And then after that, I went into nonprofit management and I helped to get a nonprofit off the ground in Boston. Um, after that, I had kind of a strange kind of meandering and I ended up being a personal assistant and um, working for one of the Rockefellers in Boston and New York, which kind of was like roads diverged with nonprofit management and personal assistant work. From there kind of led me to estate management. And um, most recently for the past several years, I've had my own kind of estate management, property management, bookkeeping business. Mm -hmm. So I have several um, residential and commercial clients on the North shore. And um, my work makes it so that I can be flexible. I work from home, from clients, online, um, kind of all over the place. But it also makes it so that I can be flexible with my town and other volunteer work as well. Mm. And Sarah, you're a mother. So <laughs> what, what, what inspired you and how did you find time to enter uh, the political forum and to serve your community? I am. You know, it's so funny. I always... Um, Paul Murphy always jokes that I'm the longest serving selectman, but the youngest, it's kind of our yes. running joke, which I'm not young anymore. But um, growing up, I, it sounds totally corny, but growing up in my house, it was like, if you're, if you're going to live somewhere and want to be part of a community, you have to give back. So we, you know, I volunteered from a really young age. My dad, who passed away actually 25 years ago was um, one of the people who got alcohol, like brought alcohol, introduced it to Rockport. And I remember going to town meetings with him when I was too young to vote and I had to wear a sticker saying guest. And when I um, kind of, I think it was around graduate school, I got recruited for the alcohol regulations committee in town and I volunteered for that. I didn't have kids at the time, I was married, and I kind of got recruited by um, the late, great Peter Beecham, who I had great respect for. Peter kind of took me to lunch one day and said, you know, um, you know, I think I, I think I see a future select woman here. And I was like, really? And so I ran for select woman and um, my husband is a coach. He's a college coach and a professional um, executive coach. He's really competitive. So he's like, if we're going to do this, we're going to win. <laughs> so he, <laughs> he was like my campaign manager. Meanwhile, I was like, you know, okay. And that was kind of the start of it. And then it was one of those things where um, that was in 2006. I had my first son in 2007 while I was on the board. And now it's, you know, I, I love my work for the town is like one of the most important things to me. And now I have two boys, they're 14 and 10. And I kind of feel like things have come full circle and I do it for them, you know, and for their future here. It's funny. I was talking to somebody yesterday who's on the economic development committee in town, and she's also a mom of two boys, similar in ages. And we were both like, you know, we do this because we want to hand the town to our kids, we want them to have a future like we have had here. Um, and, you know, that's what has become, you know, as much as it is about giving back, it's also about, you know, just handing, handing a bright future to our kids. Mm. Have the boys gone to any meetings yet? Oh, the boys go to, I will tell you, the boys go to lots of meetings. In fact, just as an aside, um, last night, the boys had an indoor soccer game and my husband's traveling, so he would typically drive. I had a meeting and I said to them, I promise I will be done quick because I had a whole carpool waiting for me to drive. And one of them said, is there public comment? Because if there's public comment, you're definitely not going to be on time. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but my God oldest, bless him. I know, I know. They're yeah. honestly, if I didn't have the support system around me, my husband and boys, there's no way I could kind of manage all of the juggle, all the balls that I do. Um, my eighth grader is really into civics and um, it makes me tear up, but I, I went and visited the civics class classes at Rockport this year and other selectmen did as well. And then um, for Christmas, I didn't know, but he had done a paper called My Civic Hero and it was all about me. And for Christmas, he framed it and gave it to me. Um, oh, that's kind so of, you know, I, I don't want to say it makes like all the all the nights and all the time worth it, but um, it definitely goes to show that like kids are watching. And, you know, I said to somebody, I'm trying to make some connections in town because one of the issues we're finding is a lot of the volunteers in town are older. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but the kids are kind of where it's at, right? The, the eighth grade civics class, they had all these great ideas about green projects and the environment. So I'm trying to kind of make those connections. And um, because, you know, it's when, you know, retirees going to evening meetings, they don't know what's being talked about in the eighth grade civics class. Right. We're trying to make, make some more connections because honestly, the kids are where it's at. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't it wonderful that, uh, your son, civic hero, is a woman too in politics or in government, I should say, right? I mean, it's, that's, yeah. It's so cool. I actually um, recently, my kids are growing up just so differently than I did. I recently told my 10 year old that it wasn't until like 1920 that women could vote. And he was absolutely blown away, which is so cool to me that. yeah right you know because he's grown up with you know me being a select woman you know doing all kinds of volunteer work um as a another volunteer job I'm the the commodore at the at the Sandy Bay Yacht Club which I just got elected to this and it's cool to see you know female commodores of yacht clubs um my sister ran for school committee um, unsuccessfully, but she's, she's a great volunteer too. So my kids, my boys, you know, and the, the boys around them are growing up with, it's understood, you know, yeah. it's understood which is just so awesome. Yeah. Well, how about female mentors for you in Rockport government? Did you, was, were you watching anyone? So you, you mentioned Peter Beecham, any women leaders you were yeah. watching? You know, when I was young, um, Priscilla Garlic. Mm -hmm. um, was a was a longtime select woman. You know, one of my mentors who isn't a female was Nick Barletta, who I actually um, I, I in my first election, I beat Nick and I knew Nick growing up from from church in the community. And I, I had a great respect for him. Um, and and frankly, you know, I never I'm never one like to, you know, to say male versus, you know, women versus man, like, you know, my mentors are all different people. Um, you know, I know you interviewed Val Gilman. She's an awesome public servant. I had a great relationship with Carolyn Kirk when she was mayor in Gloucester and Rockport and Gloucester had a great partnership. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I guess over time, lots of lots of different, you know, mentors, male and female. Mm -hmm. Right. OK, Corey, we usually switch back and forth, but I want to ask Sarah this question. Can sure, I? go ahead. <laughs> OK, um, so in 2012, there was an incident on the Board of Selectmen and one of the selectmen said to you, go back to the kitchen. How did you get through that, Sarah? It's funny you still know the year. I couldn't have even told you <laughs> what year it was. Um, so it's it's so interesting because people literally bring that up to me several times a year because I think it, it was even on like the local news. Yeah. And it's interesting. The, the selectman that said it was a longtime volunteer who I have great respect for and and still have a really good relationship with him. And it really was a comment. It was, um, it was like a naive kind of generational comment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and afterwards he apologized and the selectmen voted to, you know, to ask him to apologize. And, and he did. And, um, you know, we, we kept working together. I think after that, he actually lost the next election, I, I believe to a woman. Um, so it wasn't, it was more about, um, it, it wasn't really the comment, it was more the principle of it and that you can't, whether it's generational or ill-willed, like you can't just say things like that and get away with them. And if no one says anything about it, it will just continue and continue on. So I, I, we made a, you know, I don't want to say we made a big deal of it, but it became a big deal because like the only way comments like that and actions like that are going to stop, I feel like 
if people make a big deal of it. And, you know, and it, it came up, he apologized, we moved on. And, um, you know, we kept working successfully together, which for me was really a big part of it because it wasn't, um, you know, people said to me, oh, did you never speak to him again? And I was like, not at all. I was like, I don't have any issue with anyone. I'll work with anyone. It's more about educating people. Mm -hmm. And frankly, I think after saying that comment, he probably realized, you know, just how inappropriate how inappropriate that was at this time. And that, you know, maybe 20 years ago, it was okay to say that. Um, the other kind of family joke we have is that I am an absolutely horrible cook. <laughs> so to say that, <laughs> just like as an aside, to say that to me of all people. The like, family just yelled, no. <laughs> right? like, you know, no keep that there. Yeah, my <laughs> husband was like, not exactly the comment I would have said to you, but, you know, but big picture. And, you know, I think kind of, you know, as we go along in time and, you know, even, you know, like locally, politically, all the way up to all the way up to national politics, like it's not OK to, to speak to people and say inappropriate comments, no matter what the context. But mm -hmm. we have to call people out on it. And frankly, um, my kids were, you know, are still proud of me that that I spoke out about that. And, you know, because I don't want to pass on to my kids, you know, oh, someone said that to me, but I let it go because it's right. it's not OK. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, Sarah, you spoke a little while ago about like you're not really concerned about compartmentalizing um, the folks who volunteer for the community by race or gender, et cetera, et cetera. But how important is it to have a diversified board of selectmen for Rockport? It's so, um, it's so important. I was actually, um, for the first time in several years, I'm actually the only woman right now on the board, which for some reason just occurred to me. And um, I definitely, I, I can definitely feel it. I, I'm not, it's hard to put into words um, how I feel it. Uh, the board works, you know, we all work together well. We're very diverse, you know, ages. And I actually don't think, I'm actually not the youngest anymore now that I think of it with, oh, with Ross Brackett being elected. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Um, so that's a good thing for me. Ross is great but, in the kitchen, by the way. We should be. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, there you go. Um, but tell him to go back to the kitchen. Though. No, no. But, um, I, you know, honestly, it's so important to have a diverse, to have diverse, a diverse group of people on all boards and committees in town. And we can really see it, you know, when we come to town meeting and there's a school override issue, you know, for example, um, you know, I, I gave advice and help to a group working to pass the last school override. And I said, get some retirees you know, people who have just moved here, people who don't have kids in the school system, um, you know, people who are heavily invested in the community, because it really takes all of us from young people without kids to retirees whose kids may have never lived here, because it really takes all of us for the town, the cities, for everything to go around. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm working hard. I, I try to work hard to recruit people of all, of all ages, um, you know, and it's hard for everyone to give time, but but to be perfectly honest, the best committees are those with the most diverse group. And that also like introduces people to each other and gets people, you know, there are people on committees who are like, oh, I, you know, I don't really know anyone in town with young kids. You know, oh, I didn't know we had an integrated preschool mm -hmm. and things like that. So um, just the more we can get, and it's a small town. You know, I'm like, I walk into Cracker Jacks and I see people who are 90 and people who are five. And that's the kind of beauty of living here is that we can all work together, volunteer together. Mm. Well said. So I think so many people are aware of how much work you put in. All, all, everyone in local government puts in to these, these volunteer positions. So can you talk about the rewards? Why do you do it? Yeah, I mean, honestly, going back to the beginning of the interview, I think I do it um, to to make the, you know, I hope that when I'm done being a select woman that I will have made the community a better place um, and made it a better place to hand off to my kids, you know, and inspired them to, to give back. Um, when I talked to the eighth graders, um, I spoke to a couple of classes, we kind of split it up. And the hope and like promise that they showed for the, for the future of town and, you know, wanting to go away to college and, and come back here or wanting to, you know, stay here and go straight to work. 
And that kind of motivates me. You know, I had an amazing childhood here. We actually, I'm, I'm not a true, I was not born at Addison Gilbert, um, mm-hmm. but I was, we moved here when I was six. So um, I'm not a true rock porter. And, you know, when I was first elected, a few um, old timers in town um, <laughs> quickly, quickly corrected me. Um, but, you know, but I like to think that, you know, that I've lived here for most of my life and my, my kids are true rock porters. And honestly, like handing them a, f- a future, you know, that's as bright as, as how I've grown up here is, is really, really important to me. And also teaching them that um, for communities to be successful, like we need people to, to volunteer and give back. And we're lucky, you know, we have several hundred volunteers in Rockport. I know Gloucester has a vibrant volunteer community. I'm convinced that um, everyone has some something to give. Mm-hmm. Whether it's, you know, 15 minutes a month or, you know, the time that we give to meetings, I try not to intimidate people, mm-hmm. but, but be realistic because, you know, some committees in towns, uh, some committees and boards there, it is like a significant time, um, but it, a significant amount of time. But to be honest, you can, there are ways to volunteer, whether it's for an event, there are ways to, to give whatever time you can. And I'm convinced that everybody, I always joke, I'm like, people now spend so much time on social media. I'm like, if you cut your social media time down a tiny bit and put that into volunteering, not because I spend plenty of time on social media, ask my kids, <laughs> but um, I'm convinced that everybody has something to give back. And if, you know, if we keep, if we keep that up, you know, things will continue to be as bright. Yeah. Well, thank you for 16 years of um, the forms. <laughs> I counted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I, I just, well, I was elected last May and I had to like, look up, I had to count. Cause I was like, it can't, my husband was like six, six terms. And I was like, no, because I will tell you that, um, time flies. And what, what's happened to me is, you know, at first I, I did it just to give back and be part of the community. And now as my kids have gotten older and they've gotten into it, you know, like they, they've watched me at meetings. One of my, my oldest has um, done some volunteer work and he's applied for and gotten some of the awesome rock work grants. He's worked with, um, he worked with Bruce Reed to get music at the beach. Oh, yeah. make that a reality so you know I see my kids come to meetings and I'm like it doesn't get better than this you know yeah. it's pretty cool to like live in a town and and see your kids and and their friends like start to give back already right. so and your sister and my, my sister yeah. I, I convinced her to put her signs in the garage not throw them away because yeah. I'm like you know um you could always you know you can run again so she hopefully she won't watch this but <laughs> <laughs> well, I counted votes with her in Pigeon Cove one year. I think you weren't there. It was just your sister. Yeah. And um, so uh, we did our volunteer work that day. <laughs> yes. And we joke that for now, until she gets elected, that um, she, we, we look alike. And that right. sometimes at the dump, people think she's me. Absolutely. And I will tell you, sometimes people aren't their best at the dump and they like to like yell complaints. And so they, so sometimes she like, you know, people will yell complaints to her and comments. And so I'm like, for now, you can just, you know, be my, be my stunt double. Yeah, it's good. It's good to have one of those. Yeah. That's true. Totally. Yeah, you yeah. could cut your time in half, Sarah, pretty easily, I think. Yeah, totally. <laughs> have a stand in, yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, My last question, then, Sarah, is do you yeah. have any advice for young women, young mothers who are maybe thinking of getting more active civically? Yeah, I mean, I think, honestly, one thing that has actually come out of the pandemic is flexibility, right? So much more working remotely. Um, I feel like even with my family, we've kind of shifted a lot. My husband works from home, you know, so we set up a second home office. And um, I would just say to people, like, you have to be flexible and have a really good attitude. Um, you know, like I, I get up in the morning, I have, you know, my, my plate is full, right? But I wouldn't want it any other way. And I just kind of have a good attitude and you know, I look at my meetings as like relationships and and kind of what I do for fun, my family jokes. My mom actually gave me a a a t-shirt for Christmas of someone sitting at the beach on the phone. And it was like, I'm in a meeting. Um, (laughs) But, you know, I think there are ways to kind of fit it all in. You just have to have a good attitude about it. 
and be flexible and build a really good support system around you. When the boys were really young, we had a, a pact, my husband and I, that I wouldn't, we wouldn't pay for babysitting for volunteer work. So basically like, you know, we would, you know, get like in honestly family and friends stepped up, my parents, uh, my mom stepped up, my husband's parents to kind of chip in as the kids were little. And, you know, I had night meetings and my husband, you know, was commuting to Boston. And, you know, it's all about just kind of making it work. But if something's important to you, there are ways to, you know, there are ways to make it work. And, you know, I, I honestly do feel like the pandemic now and Zoom meetings, um, one thing, you know, is because of Zoom, you know, most town meetings are remote, especially since, you know, the resurgence of with Omicron. And um, so, whereas I was going to like two meetings a week, maybe three now, you know, some weeks yeah. it's four, I know. Okay. Yeah four to eight, which can be a lot, but, um, you know, I've, it's also taught me to have boundaries, you know, and last night, like driving the boys to indoor soccer and going to that game was a priority. And I, you know, I had to say to the selectmen, listen, you know, this is what time I have to leave tonight. So it's kind of knowing your boundaries, but also knowing that if you're able to be flexible and fill it all in and fit it all in, um, the value of, you know, what you bring to the table. I like to say the people that give back most sometimes are the busiest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you two are an example of that. Like our plates are full, but we wouldn't have it any other way, you know? And, and I, we know when I go to bed at night and if I've been to two meetings and had a full work day or a, a work catastrophe, like I always joke, I say, January is my busiest work month, but now it seems to be January, February, and now March are my busiest work <laughs> months. Mm -hmm. But you know, you just have to have a good attitude and make it all fit in, but also um, have boundaries. So mm -hmm. I hope I, I, that's probably like a crazy long winded answer. But, you know, yeah. I feel like the people that, you know, that can fit it all in and make it work um, also like get the most out of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Agreed. Well, thank you so much. This has been really a great conversation. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. And um, we love what 1623 Studios is doing. And I know so many people in town, especially homebound um, seniors, really, really appreciate the coverage now. And um, you guys are doing an awesome job. Well, thank thanks for your time, Sarah. Thanks so much. Nice to see you. See you Bye. Soon. Bye. Interested in a sponsorship? Email sponsor at 1623studios.org to learn more.